lot of opportunities to travel to really cool places around the United States, but one of the states that I still haven't gotten to, and that when you think about it is probably the most exotic state we have here in the US of A, that's Hawaii. But today, thanks to Mattel, I'm gonna get a little taste of Hawaii in Mommy's Doll Corner. Did you like my hula movements? <laughs> I'm such a bad hula person. So, okay, as you can tell from the title, <clears throat> today we are going to be unboxing and learning about Nanea. She is the newest girl, a uh, Be Forever girl from American Girl, and she's from the island of Hawaii. Yes, that's kind of how you say it. And I am so excited to unbox her because I saw her at the Mattel headquarters and she's absolutely beautiful and I love her story and I just think it's really, 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 really cool. Um, and oh, I can't wait to get her out of the box. And of course you'll notice the box is back to being this box style because I know a lot of collectors didn't like the other box style. Thank you to Mattel for sending me Nanea. They also sent me, wait, I'm old, I need the glasses. Uh, Nanea's accessories. So these are the accessories that you can get, you know, like when you get a Bee Forever and you add on her accessories. So that's really cool. Ooh, I'm digging these. <clears throat> and Nanea's hula implements and her hula outfit. I cannot wait to dress her up in this. And then you're gonna get one of mommy's history lessons on hula. But right now, let's get Nanea out of her box so you can see her in her Be Forever outfit. I'll be right back. And Nanea is out of the box. And yes, I am on this side of the camera today. I wanna to be close to her and honestly, my legs are a little tired. She is beautiful and her hair is gorgeous. You know, American Girl hair comes out of the hairnet and it is just silky. Look at this hair. I love, love, love her hair so much. So a little bit of history about Nanea and the time she's from, because that's what Be Forever is all about from American Girl. It's about telling stories of young girls growing up in different eras and helping the girls of today to understand the struggles those girls went through, how they overcame them, and then hopefully you can bring some of that into your modern life and help you to find some strength and inspiration from these girls. So Nanea's story to me is very powerful. She lives in Hawaii and her father works at the naval base at Pearl Harbor. And in December of 1941, the Japanese bombed the naval base where Nanea's dad worked, Pearl Harbor. And many, many people were, and soldiers were killed that day um, when that happened. And it's, uh, as it has always been said because of the newsreel that ran about the story, it was a day that will live in infamy. Uh, because it was the first attack on American soil um, by a foreign country. So uh, since, obviously, since the Revolutionary War, the War for Independence, depending on what history book you're reading, what you're gonna call it. So Nanea goes from being sort of a happy-go-lucky Hawaiian girl to living in the aftermath of what happened at Pearl Harbor. It affected not just her family, but her friends, and there are people missing and people injured, and her friends are going through heartache. And so she needs to grow up in that. And one of the things that she wants to do is her grandparents own a market, and she really, really wants to work at that market, but they, are, they tell her that she needs to prove that she can be responsible enough to work at that market. So that's uh, what goes goes on in Nanea's book and I cannot wait to sit down and read it because I am fascinated by Hawaii before it became a part of the United States. By the way, you uh, it became part of the United States in, I think it was April, no, wait, no, 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 wait, 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 August, August 21st, 1959. Uh, who remembers her history? Yes, that was when Hawaii was the last state to join the USA. So now let's take a closer look at her. So I said the hair is gorgeous. She comes with this beautiful hibiscus flower barrette. Uh, it doesn't, it's not in her hair when you get her, it's in the box. 
So you can just clip that in. I'm just gonna clip that right over here so I've got a little aloha feel. By the way, did you know that aloha doesn't just mean hello and goodbye, although that is the way it is used. By the way, this fabric is very traditional um, and uh, all of the clothes and all the fabrics used in Nanea's collection are traditional. These are not stereotypes. Uh, American Girl worked for a number of years with um, people from Hawaii, cultural historians, to make sure that her collection and her story is accurate. And I love that about American Girl. They didn't just up and make a Hawaiian girl and just be like, okay, stereotype, Hawaiian stereotype. A lot of the fabrics that you see in Nanea's collection look, you know, they're very floral and they're very bright and you're sort of like, oh my gosh, that's such a Hawaiian stereotype. Turns out that that's exactly what a girl would have been wearing in Hawaii at that time. Her eyes are really interesting. I'm going with hazel. You guys let me know what you think. Why don't you come up over here, get a little closer to the camera for us. I'm going more hazel than brown. Um, I also really like her facial mold. It's very sweet, but aren't they always? And then of course, we've got the sleepy eyes. All right, so let's get to, let's get to changing her into her other outfits. By the way, I said I was going to give you um, some more history, and I started to say aloha doesn't just mean hello or goodbye. Do you know what else aloha means? I'm putting her on a stand. Uh, of course, she does not come with a stand. Uh, Kaiser, my favorite doll stand maker, also makes stands for 18 inch dolls. <laughs> They're amazing, love them. So aloha doesn't just mean hello or goodbye. It means it's more of a concept. Aloha is more of a concept than a greeting, but it is used traditionally as a greeting nowadays. Uh, it, it is, it's a way to wish people peace and happiness and aloha is kind of like, a, whoops, hashtag so profesh. Aloha is like a state of being or a state of mind and a feeling more than a uh, just a, a greeting, by the way. Okay. So these are Nanea's accessories. And let's see what we've got here. Aha. So Nanea comes with money. So United States money, because they were a territory of the United States. They just were not officially a state. Ooh, she's got some jewelry. Ooh, um, Nanea Mitchell. She gets a letter from her friend in San Francisco, California. That's pretty cool. Um, she's got this really cool tote bag so she can carry things when she goes to the market and notice that the inside fabric matches her fabric. That's pretty cool. And that's also actually very real and very traditional because you would re you, you, you didn't just make one outfit. You used the fabric to make whatever you needed to make. And she also comes with this like little wallet, little pouchy thing. So here's a little pouch that she can put stuff in and it's got a drawstring. That's very cute. And she can sort of put that on her wrist and put that in your hand. I'll hold it in my hand, yeah. So she could put her stuff in there. And more bling bling, more bling bling. Also, remember, this is during the war and she lives in the territory of Hawaii. This is Nanea's official identification papers. So she would need to be carrying this wherever she went. It's got her name and all of her vital information and her fingerprints. And so she could keep that either in her tote bag or in her little wristlet here along with her money. There's her dollar bill and stamped on the back of it is Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So I put her letter in her tote bag. So here's her letter. Via airmail, of course. So one of the reasons I've never been to Hawaii, by the way, is because it's such a long way to fly for me. Just an FYI. To fly to Hawaii from New York is, does anybody know? Comment down below if you know how long it is. I know that most people, when they do it, they uh, stop over at, let's see, is this two necklaces? I guess this is two necklaces, because this doesn't work as a bracelet. It's too big. Um, they stop over either in San Francisco or they stop over in Las Vegas. So let me get this other one around her neck. 
So I'm probably doing this wrong. I just put both of these on her neck as a necklace. Ow, finger stuck in stand, hashtag so profesh. So they're little shells and they're beautiful. Now I bet maybe a little girl, a girl could wear, one of these could be a necklace for Nanea and one of them could be a bracelet for a little girl. I betcha, I betcha, I betcha. By the way, yes, the background is different. I'm back to the blue background for right now. I like to change things up. So I am going to take her out of this outfit and change her into her hula outfit. But first, let's take a look at the hula outfit and stay. And of course, she can stand up on her own because American girls do. do. American girl dolls do. I'm just too clumsy and I will knock her over 87 times in the course of making this video. So that is why I put them on stands. Because I so her hula set, of course, comes with a traditional grass hula skirt and a nice top to go with that. It comes with these things that I know that they use in the dance and I don't know what they're called. And it comes with a set of a flower lay, flower crown. Actually, this is probably the crown. This is probably the lay and the little wrist lays, which when I was a kid, this brought back memories. Somebody gave me one of these. Um, it wasn't real flowers. Uh, it was more like this when I was a little girl and I don't remember who it was, but I just, as I was do unboxing this, I remember loving it. So I am going to get this out of the box along with her hula accessories and we'll be right back. So this is amazing. It's just so wonderfully traditional. So she's got her crown of flowers. She's got her lay. She's got her flowers on her wrists. She's got her doodads that I don't know what they're called. Um, I think that they normally make noise um, that they have, that they're like, you know, almost like a gourd or, um, but they have flowers on them. And I think they make noise, I think. She's got um, the red shirt and then you tuck that in to her very long, hula skirt because in traditional hula people aren't dressed like Las Vegas showgirls. <laughs> so hula is a dance and I'm going to talk a little bit about hula. Do you mind? No, go ahead and tell the mommy you seem to be the authority on Hawaii. Very nice cultural appropriation. I'm just trying to teach them some history, sweetie. You know Grace would be mad at you right now, right? That's why she's not in this video. Yeah. So this is Nanea's uh, accessory bag. This is her um, hula instruments, accessories. I'll, I'll, I'll write down below what the actual name of this is. So she has this little tote bag and she carries all her stuff in. So when she goes to hula class, now hula would be taught uh, to young girls and probably is still taught to many young girls in Hawaii. See, she's got some music and I'll show you in a minute what the music, the sheet music is for. Uh, she comes with two rhythm sticks. Rhythm sticks are something that is used also in hula. And then bang them on the ground, stuff like that. She's also got this really cool drum that she can sling up over her shoulder. Here you go. Let me get that up on your shoulder, girl. And then, see, so she's got this drum. So she can play drums and she also has sticks that fit over her, I think they go on her thumbs most likely, yes. So we've got drum sticks. Let me take this out of here for your thumbs. Get on there, get on there. And she's like leaning back, right? Here, you wanna get off the stand? Could you please, it's very uncomfortable. Oh, okay, thank you. So uh, she's got her sticks and she's got her drum and she can do all kinds of different cool hula-like stuff. Hula is about telling stories. It's not just about dancing. And of course she's barefoot because traditionally hula is done without shoes on because the movement of the feet tell the story as much as the movement of the hands and the body. And I, uh, we live in an area where um, there are a lot of Indian and Sri Lankan people. And I know that um, their children go to school to learn dances. And it's very similar to the way hula is. That they're telling all of the movements of the hands, the head, 
the body, the legs, even the way you position the feet is all part of telling a story. And this is how down through the ages, um, the stories of the Hawaiian people, the Polynesian people were told. They weren't you know, written down into books. They were, and she's got some river stones here. Let me put some river stones on your fingers. Okay, sure, go ahead. She's got some river stones as well as part of this set. Instead of telling stories through books or just sort of sitting around grandma's rocking chair, they told stories through dance and music. And I think that's really, really cool. Now there's one last thing that comes with this set with all of her additional accessories. And it explains why there's sheet music because traditional hula, not really needing sheet music because it's, it's taught by an instructor who, you know, a hula person, you know, she teaches you how to do it and you pass it down from generation to generation. But the Western world introduced a little something to Hawaii and it's called the ukulele. Now, um, I, I have, I have a friend actually, uh, who's, who's older than I am. And, uh, for her 50th birthday, she got a ukulele and ukulele lessons. And I thought that was really cool. So this actually is, uh, it plays, it has a button on the back. So Nanea can play the ukulele. So it's got this sort of handle on it right here. And I'm trying to figure out how we do this so that it looks like she's playing the ukulele. I don't know, how do you do that? I don't know, just do it with your hands. There you go. <laughs> So it also comes with this ukulele, which is really, really cool. And the ukulele was not originally a Hawaiian instrument. It was something that was introduced. The concept of like a guitar like instrument was introduced to Hawaii later on. Um, so, but it's become associated with Hawaiian music and is played now traditionally as part of the hula. So thank you again to Mattel for Nanea. I, I'm in love with her. I love her eyes. I love the hula outfit, especially. She has an absolutely gorgeous collection. She has her grandfather's, um, her grandparents' market stand. It's just really amazing. And um, you should really, really check her out. And she's definitely a really great Be Forever girl doll. Um, and I would definitely recommend her as a holiday gift um, to a child in your life because her story is more, uh, it's a little bit more recent. It's something that probably, um, there are still some grandparents in your life, uh, that can, can, you know, remember what it was like to be an adult in those times. But my mother was born in 1941. So she, uh, she was a child who grew up as a, as a small girl during World War II. And um, you probably, there are probably grandparents who were children growing up during World War II who could sort of share with the children in your life what that was like. And I think that's the most important thing to me about American Girl Be Forever Dolls is, is it's a beautiful way to have a beautiful doll, but also talk about history and culture. So thank you again to Mattel and American Girl for sending Nanea to me. She is a beautiful new addition to my collection here at Mommy's Doll Corner. And I thank you all for watching and Nanea and I will see you again real soon. Aloha!